We all live for that flash of inspiration, that sudden realization, when all the dots join together. Some call this the light bulb moment. At Philips Research, we've had quite a few of them over the years. In 1914, Anton and Gerard Phillips had an idea for a world-class research center and asked the scientist Gillis Holst to take the lead. It was a place to gather the best innovative minds and give them the freedom to push the boundaries of technical possibility. A place where famous scientists such as Nobel Prize winner Gustav Hertz would share their knowledge. A place that would inspire people to invent to reach out to other disciplines and to overcome obstacles on the path to groundbreaking innovations. From a way to create brighter and energy efficient streetlights to innovations in X-ray technology that would save thousands of lives all over the world. From light and X-ray, Philips research moved to sound by inventing the pentode, making waves in radio innovation, to bring entertainment and news in good times and bad, and reach out to families in distant parts of the world. In those days, our expertise in vacuum electronics was the driving force behind new innovations. From light and sound to television, to bring to people's homes the key moments that changed us all. Some of our fundamental explorations into magnetic materials and electromagnetism led to day-to-day -day successes like the electric shaver is in personal care and paved the way for creating superior loudspeakers, magnetic ring core memory-based computing and telephone technology. Electromagnetism and mechatronics capability helped us give people the power to listen to and record music on the move and to watch and record their favorite films. In parallel, we entered the fields of ultrasound and magnetic resonance imaging, which revolutionized medical diagnostics. Through an early license on the Bell Labs transistor, in exchange for our patents on magnetism, we stepped in the era of solid-state electronics and integrated circuits. And the leap from analog to digital systems opened the door to Moore's law-based miniaturization and the processing of unlimited data. Combining our expertise in optics and mechatronics led to innovative systems, such as the first infrared satellite, electron microscopy, and to what is now the world's leading wafer stepper company, ASML. Optical recording was developed for consumer use, creating with Sony the world's first CD, followed by the DVD and Blu-ray. Today, 100 years since the birth of Philips Research, our journey continues as technologies change and as human needs evolve. We're shaking things up to find new ways to connect the dots. To surprise and delight. In healthcare, we continue to innovate in precision diagnostics and minimally invasive procedures as well as monitoring of patients and data-rich health services. Lighting is transforming to digital as well, harnessing the power of LED in all sorts of applications and giving room to fully controlled lighting solutions from the home to mega cities. While healthy living, well-being 
and adapting to local taste are the focal points of our lifestyle domain. Our teams are more dynamic and diverse than ever before. Just like our partners, with whom we're co-creating new solutions across the globe and across industries. So that together, we keep pushing the boundaries of what we know. To make sure those light bulb moments are still going strong 100 years from now. Innovation and you. Philips. Ever since the Phillips brothers lifted Eindhoven out of darkness, our mission has been to create a company that makes a difference. We're inspired by you. We innovate to find new ways to improve your life. Others may focus on what innovation does. We focus on what it does for you. Innovation and you.
this is the northernmost town of the world. You have dark 24 hours a day. Darkness. Just darkness. It's claustrophobic. You feel like you're in a box. It's a rather extreme experience. It's pretty scary. <laughs> to me, it's quite amazing to raise a family here. In our family, the daddy and the oldest son have uh, the most hard time getting up in the morning. But also to go to bed at night because you lose every kind of feeling of the, of the change of the day. My big brother have a big problem waking up in the morning. You have no idea <laughs> how it is to wake up when it's dark all day <laughs> and all night. And you just, oh, I don't want to get up, it's night, it's not school now. And then the clock is eight in the morning and just, oh. We miss being able to kind of wake up and have some sense of it turning into day. Uh, before you, you get up in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to welcome you all here this evening as Philips hands out the wake-up lights to test during the dark season. One of the things that we look at in these studies is sleep inertia. Now sleep inertia is when you wake up with an alarm clock and you're like this, <sighs> where's the light, where's the toothpaste? You have a hard time getting going. And one thing that we know is that our body clocks are very sensitive and very adaptable to light. And this is really why we've developed the wake-up light. If we can effectively wash out the sleep hormones before you wake up, that's going to greatly resolve the issue of sleep inertia so you're not as groggy in the morning time. I think my oldest son has asked to get one of his own. He'll have the chance to try it and see what he thinks. It worked very good. It actually feels like uh, the sun comes into your room. It's so extremely noticeable. You actually get some help knowing that it's morning and... I think it, it worked for me, yes it did. There was no problem waking up. I noticed it in the way that I wasn't that sleepy when I woke up. You have to have a system for going to bed and get up. Because for my family it feels wonderful. And I can also see that for other families, it's quite amazing. Innovation and you. Philips. Well, I'm Mario Stomontoya, and the owner of E5 SA. It's an engineering company. Philips and Esinco made a partnership in this project. Philips is our technological partner with the lighting. They helped with the design, and they supplied the products, supporting us in any technological development related to lighting. This is not an office where you can calculate exactly how many lumens you want. This is artistic work. The innovation in lighting that we installed in the Seoul Cathedral has helped visitors to have a beautiful experience. When someone comes from abroad, a foreigner, and asks, what can I do in Bogota? First thing, top of mind, is go to the Seoul Cathedral. Yo soy Maria Sabio de Herrera, soy una artesana. Fuera de eso, soy hija de un salinero. Antes de la iluminación de la catedral de Santos de cuatro años, venía más poquita gente. La nueva iluminación atrae más gente, se venden más las artesanías y turista atrae más turistas. 
Ahorita de las artesanías viven los cuatro hijos prácticamente. Es la Virgen y la Catedral de Sal es el futuro de mi familia. Oh, personally, for me, this is the project of my life. The lighting brought this place to life. Without lighting, this place was a cave. Innovation and you. Phillips. Corpus definitely is a working class town. My family goes back four generations here. As a kid, I remember the Harbor Bridge from where my dad was taking me down here to the port to watch ships or down to the barge dock to look at the water. The Harbor Bridge for about 12 years was a part of the city night skyline. One day, it just disappeared from everybody's view. The lights had to be turned off. The mayor had envisioned Corpus Christi, as we call it, the sparkling city by the sea, as a place that should capture that same essence. And I said, you know, instead of just putting lights on it that can change colors, let's do something where we could change the appearance of it, make it an interesting focal point. Phillips had a very innovative design department. They produced some concepts of what could be done with the Harbor Bridge. We explored the opportunity. It was a very fluid process. They provided people that helped us through the design aspects of it. They've been there every day since then to help me through the process. The first time I saw the lights light up on the bridge, it was absolutely outstanding. The Harbor Bridge went from being this dark structure that you didn't see at night to being a beacon. It's a distinction for us, so our residents now look at it as something that is a sense of pride. Not only were they environmentally efficient, they're going to be cost effective, and so I think there's a multiplier of economics that also needs to be considered. The relighting of the bridge had an impact on my work. There's always couples and families who want to come down and have their picture taken in front of it. When you have something like the bridge that's riding that wave of momentum with those beautiful lights, I think it's very reflective of our successful future. When I see it, I, I know that I'm home. I know that I'm where I belong. Innovation and you. Ever since the Phillips brothers lifted Eindhoven out of darkness, our mission has been to create a company that makes a difference. A company that not only provides income to our workers and shareholders, but one that improves people's lives. Today, our mission is as relevant as it has ever been. We believe that by daring to make choices which make people's lives better, we will be successful. We believe that our mission is a journey and not a destination. We believe the way to realize our mission is through innovation. We believe that to truly innovate, you need to get to the heart of a problem. Our mission is for those who are caring, who are pioneers, and who are courageous. And though it is the harder road to take, it is the reason why we employ technology to improve the lives of billions. It is the reason why Philips delivers innovation that matters to you.
My name is Dietmar Thomas. I'm communication specialist for Philips LumiBlade. Philips LumiBlade is the OLED lighting technology at Philips. And we are here at the LumiBlade Creative Lab in Aachen. That's our center for open innovation on OLED lighting. OLED, uh, by the way, stands for organic LED. It's actually the first light source ever, which is a complete surface light source. All other light sources uh, which have been on the market since ages are point light sources, starting with the flame, with the candle going up to the light bulb and uh, to the high-powered LED. So for the first time, uh, people don't need a system to spread the light. Or the system is, so to say, built in. In the room behind me, you see some of the products which have been designed here at the Creative Lab uh, by famous designers like uh, Jason Bruch and Tom Dixon. Next to me there's uh, Jason Bruch's Mimosa imitating flower heads opening and closing. In the far background you see our interactive wall, co-designed by Random International, the artist consortium in London. So everything we are showing here is already on the market and is uh, sought after by many designers and architects. OLED have many other features which are very different to other light sources. For example, they are extremely thin, just 1.8 millimeters at the moment, going even below the millimeters very soon. The people we have worked together say this is actually not a light source, it's, it's more a material which emits beautiful light. OLED will open up completely new ways where light can be introduced to the customer. For example, integrated in furniture due to the fact that the OLEDs are not getting very warm. We are talking about 30 degrees centigrade maximum. OLEDs can also be used with straw or paper, a material which has been a no-go for any other light sources like LED because those light sources are getting so hot that there is the danger of fire. Just imagine windows where uh, transparent OLEDs are integrated. So during the day, the sun shines into the room and in the evening, you're not switching on the ceiling lamp or the wall lamp, but instead you're switching on the window. If you see the backlights of cars today, they use rows of LEDs stacked to each other in order to make a surface light source. Now comes the OLED, which is a surface light source. So the designer of the car comes to us and says, okay, I want to have the OLED in exactly this form and color, and we can produce that. And the advantage is even more, not only the design freedom, it's also the construction freedom, of course. OLEDs are just 1.8 millimeters, and the rest can be used either for more space in the booth, for example, or to make the car shorter. In the far future, let's say five, ten years from now, is that you paint the wall with a color where OLED is mixed into it. So you paint the wall, and when you apply a current to it, the whole wall lights up in a nice ambient lighting. So the future is really unbelievable. With such installations like the one behind me flickering, it's very important that you have to have a system to replace OLEDs in case something breaks and that you don't see that this OLED is new when it's replaced. So we have found a way to actually make brand new OLEDs look the way the old OLEDs look. That's not possible with LEDs because with LEDs you always see that there's a new LED in there. They are always brighter than the rest of the installation, not with our OLEDs. We have found a way and that is very appreciated by our customers like designers and architects. There are three things which are going to happen with OLEDs. They're getting larger, they're getting brighter, and they're getting more efficient. At the moment, the maximum size we can offer to our customers is roughly 12 by 12 centimeters. But in the future, we will see a square meter of OLED, which you can easily integrate into uh, the ceiling or any other material. The square meter costs between six and 7,000 euros. But we expect a price drop to below 1,000 euros a square meter within the next years. I expect the OLEDs to be in the mass market within the next five years, so everyone can buy OLED systems at IKEA, for example.
Can you call the grid supply system? 